Hello everyone. So in this video, I'm going to show you how you can use Excel to figure out the present value of an ordinary annuity. Let's go right to a problem. Let's suppose that your rich and benevolent uncle has promised to give you $500 every year for the next seven years. So this is an annuity. Why? Because you're going to get the same cash flow. You're going to get it every year and you are going to get it for a set number of years, which is seven years. So this is an annuity. Uh, you will receive the first $500 one year from today. Now this portion is what makes this an ordinary annuity because the first 500 is going to come to you one time period from now. If the banks are paying an annual interest rate of 4%, the question is how much is this cash flow stream worth to you today? And so it might be useful to see this on a timeline. Basically, if this is today and these are the ends of year one, two to seven, then basically the annuity looks like this where you're going to get $500 every year for the next seven years. Now, I'm going to show you a couple of ways in which you can do this. Now, the formulaic approach to solving this problem is this. You'd say, oh, I know that this is the formula to calculate the present value of an ordinary annuity. So you try to replicate this formula in Excel, which is going to take you some time because this is what you're going to do. You're going to say, look, uh, the cash flow, the cash flow that I'm getting every year is 500. That's C. Uh, R is 4%, T is 7. So you literally try to try to replicate this formula. So present value using the formula approach is basically going to do this. You take equal to, you say 500, and then you multiply that by, and here we go, 1 minus. Then you have to do 1 uh, divided by, and then you do 1 plus uh 0 0.04 um all of this this just the denominator needs to be raised to the power 7 which is t then when you put this bracket this basic this 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 bracket basically encloses 1 over 1 plus r raised to the power t and then you need to put yet another bracket uh, because then that is closing this one minus stuff. So basically now you're solving the numerator. Basically all of this is just solving this portion of, of, of the formula. But then you need to take this whole thing and divide it by R again. So now I'm going to put one added bracket here, but then I need to put one added bracket here. Yep, yep, I know. It's like, whoa, what's going on? Anyway, let's see how this goes. And then you do it divided by, and finally 0 0.04. And so when you do this, you find that the present value of this annuity is 3,001.03. Yeah, uh, as you can see, there's a lot of room for you to make a mistake over here. One bracket here, one bracket there, and you like you, you could mess this whole thing up. Fortunately, uh, there are better ways of going about it. Now, one way in which you could do this using Excel is this. You might recall seeing a present value function. Now, if you invoke this present value function or present value formula in Excel and you open the bracket, it says, look, first tell me what is the interest rate? That's easy. That's 4%, so 0 0.04. Okay. Number of time periods, NPER. How many time periods are we dealing with here? Seven. Okay, seven. Now, here's the tricky part. PMT stands for payment. As I've said in some of my early lectures, payment stands for the fixed payment that you're getting for uh, certain numbers of uh, number of years. So this is the regular payment. Are we getting a regular payment here? Yes, we are. Yes, we are. We're getting a regular payment of 500. So here, payment is what you're going to enter as 500. There is no future value. Yes, all of these 500s are in the future. You're absolutely right about that. But all of that is being accounted for by you entering $500 as the payment. In a way, you're saying that all I'm going to get in the future seven 500s, right? So you, then you don't need to account for a future value separately. So you can just go past this. Now, when you will... Uh, go to the type, it will ask you, look, are we dealing with cash flows at the end of the period or at the beginning of the period? And in this case, we are dealing with cash flows that are coming at the end of the period. Like this first 500 is at the end of year one, end of year two, end of year three. So this is the default setting. 
put differently, Excel is basically asking you, am I dealing with an ordinary annuity here or an annuity due? And the default setting is that Excel treats every uh, annuity as an ordinary annuity. So zero is the default setting here. So we're not going to mess with this either. We're just going to say, okay, yes, all the cash flows are coming at the end of the period, at the end of year one, year two, so on and so forth. So let's just go past this as well. And now if you make this enter, hey, what do you know? 3,001.03. It is showing up as a negative and we know why because we entered 500, the future value is a positive number. But you can ignore the negative portion. Basically, the present value is coming out to the same, out to be the same as what we got from the formula. And so, this, so the key here is that you needed to enter $500 as the payment over here. There's yet another way in which you could have done this, and this is uh, this is uh, also something that you've uh, seen before. One other way in which you could have done this is you said equal to NPV. Now, you might recall that when you use the net present value function, uh, this basically asks you, tell me what the rate is. So you say 0 0.04, that's the rate, and then it says, okay, what is the first value that you need me to discount? And you're saying, well, the first is 500, the second is 500, the third is 500. So if you highlight all these values going from here, 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 all the way, if you highlight all of these, if you do this, you'll still get the same answer because Excel will literally take the first value, second value, and keep discounting the bag and then sum up the discounted value of all of these 500s. So if you do this, you'll get the exact same answer as well. Uh, you might ask, you know, when do I use this formula? When do I use this formula? Uh, you will learn that with experience. I, I don't know how to, I don't know how to answer that for you. You'll see in certain situations, uh, you will find that this formula is useful in certain situations. This formula is useful. Notice that this NPV formula is more general. Uh, what do I mean by that? If this were not an annuity, if this were 500 and then 600 and then 700 or some different numbers, then you could not use this formula because then you wouldn't have a fixed $500 payment coming in. But you could use this formula because it doesn't matter what the values are over here. The NPV formula would simply discount them all back and then tell you what the present value is. So the NPV formula is a little bit more general and therefore often used uh, when the cash flows that you're receiving in the future uh, are not an annuity, they're, you know, anything else other than an annuity. But when you're dealing with an annuity, typically you end up using a formula like this. And so this is how you can determine the present value of an ordinary annuity using Excel.